Good morning, everybody. Well, good afternoon now. It's 12 uh, I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being videoed. <coughs> Members of the public are entitled to record the proceedings and are requested to give prior notice so that any additional measures that may assist can be put into place. Any member of the public who has no, any concern should raise them now. Right, back then. Can we have a podium for absence, please? Yeah, he's not present. Steve, 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 I don't know whether he's coming. He's, 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 he's running, not by the email, he's running late and he's going to try and get with us. Okay, he'll be with us as soon as he can. Uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Has any member of the cabinet got any pecuniary interest to declare? No? Item 3, public question times. Have we received any? We've received no questions from members of the public. Uh, so then we move on to item four, matters referred from scrutiny to the council. So. None. There isn't any. No, this is going to be a quick meeting, I think. Uh, we come on to a really important part of the uh, part of the meeting, which is the financial strategy uh, uh, today. Uh, I, I, I think it's probably the most difficult one that I can think that I've ever had to uh, be involved in or propose. Uh, um, We've had to strike a, a, a balanced budget for, for the two years, and, and unfortunately that means you know, some draconian and unthinkable things, as you've seen it in the paper. Uh, we're hopeful that we can get some movement from the, the government. There is immense pressure going on the government, uh, both from the County Council's network, the LGA. Uh, I and other leaders have written today, we are about to write to David Cameron. I have actually sent a personal letter to David uh, Cameron explaining things that probably Clive couldn't say to him uh, about the, uh, the settlement. We're not asking the government to provide extra finance for local government, but what we are asking for is a fair settlement between the rural uh, and the urban areas. This is uh, the urban areas are, are, are making money and rural areas, and, it's, and not only us, it's other rural counties are actually uh, dramatically losing funding which results in this, uh, this budget strategy, financial strategy that we are uh, uh, putting forward uh, today. So it, you, you could say it's the, the worst case scenario, uh, but you can also say that it's the only scenario to strike a legal budget in uh, this year and next year these are the kind of things that we will have to do. Uh, none of us want to do it. We find it very unpalatable to even suggest doing a lot of these things. Uh, and hopefully that uh, it will stimulate people to, uh, uh, to look at rural funding more seriously and, uh, and do something ab about the settlement. I'm, I'm marginally optimistic that the government will have to sort out this, the funding between uh, central government and urban areas. Uh, and it may be that uh, the easiest way out of them would be actually to lift the cap on, on those authorities that have got uh, the lower base budgets because of free, the freezing council tax for five or six years. But that uh, remains to be seen. We'll have some answers in February when Parliament debates the, debates the bill. So I think that's really all I've got to say at the moment. Is anybody else have any questions? Roger. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. I was hoping some members of the company would come in and say something because uh, I think the paper before you today, uh, I don't think is deliverable. I don't think the people in Shropshire can actually um, expect the council to deliver what is being shown there. To pick out certain aspects of it uh, in the papers there on the data at the back of it. It shows recreation facilities, swimming pools, almost going down to zero. Locality commissioning, which I notice in one of the port it only commissioning only appears in one of the portfolio holders, and it says about local commissioning, but locality commissioning is down to zero in 2018-19. The theatre is showing a hundred and three thousand pound extra coming in in 2018-19. I'm not sure that it's deliverable. I'm not sure that it's feasible. Looking forward, and as I said on the budget which was done by the uh, previous administration, if I can use that term, 
that uh, if you look at safeguarding for children, spending six, just over £16 million pound now, <coughs> and a similar sort of amount in 2021, I'm not sure that we can sustain ourselves to legally deliver the service that is needed. And it is in great danger of uh, finishing up like a number of other local authorities have in recent years in not, not uh, safeguarding those vulnerable people in Shropshire that we should be doing it. Libraries, I see no reference about mobile libraries, but it's the detail that will be coming out, I think, in the next few months behind it. And I look forward to briefing sessions, maybe with the portfolio holders, to find out exactly how they are going to deliver what is what is there. I'm not sure that it is deliverable. Uh, since 2009, certain budgets, as everyone around the table knows, have not been <coughs> deliverable. There's been, there's been, oh, been one-offs all the way through. This next budget from 2016-17, the amount of one-offs that are in there are just horrendous. I think the cabinet, the new cabinet, the old members on the cabinet really need to look at their portfolios and put in place policies that the officers can follow so that <coughs> they are able to deliver the budget that the cabinet members say they should be. It has not happened now for the last seven years. And that is why we are where we are. Economic development. I would have thought that's something we should be looking at in the future, building up investment. There are other authorities not far from here who are building houses, developing, and they're getting far more return than they are having to pay in interest charges. Their economic development is being hard, being diminished in this. I'm not sure that, as I say, it is a very horrendous case for Shropshire to face over the next four years, and I would hope, as the portfolios in the next two or three months can actually come forward with some positive messages to say how <coughs> Shropshire is going to be taken forward into the next 2020. Uh, thank you, Roger. I, I will say on, on vulnerable people, as you know, we actually prioritised expenditure on, on children's and, and adult services to, to, to make sure that we don't fail in our statutory duty to do that. And uh, I, I, I know that uh, I, I've already told our portfolio old for education, I never want to see headlines in the Shropshire Star about children's services. So I think you're, that's a bit scaremongering to suggest that we're not going to be able to meet our statutory uh, obligations. But we are where we are, and I will remind you that uh, uh, there is a new era dawning, uh, and I have met with you and I met with Alan, and I've already said that um, we've got 12 months to talk and to debate uh, the, these, uh, the, the, these cuts that, that may or may not have to be happen. And I've already invited you to put forward your ideas and that Alan to put forward his ideas and how we can actually uh, change that and make, make it palatable. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at the figures, there's, there's not, it's a rock and a hard place and there's not that far you can actually go. But I, I welcome any comments that you or Alan want to make on in, uh, on next year's budget to uh, yeah. we'll consider all of those. Can I come back? Yeah. One thing I meant to say earlier on was that uh, what I do welcome is your comments to working together with the voluntary sector and the parish and town councils. And I think that is a positive message. We do need to work in partnership for it. And I would urge you for this coming 12 months to reinstate as a one-off to start with the uh, council tax support grant for parish and town councils and show there is a partnership there, ask them to use it to assist in their voluntary sector in their areas, to put some grants in place to help deliver things there. It, as a one-off, you can work in partnership, but it would, I think, give a good indication to the parish and town council sector that it is a partnership. We will provide, we, Shropshire Council, would provide the £600,000 that the council is being given from government as a grant. We will not keep it. We will let you have it. And let's work in partnership to see how it can be used to actually bring in more money to the people in Shropshire and help the communities that we both serve. Uh, thank you, Roger. I'm going to give you the same answers I gave before. I, 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 I have a great affection for parish councils. I was... Uh, I was chairman of Salk for three years, the uh, Bridge of Area, I still sit on my, my parish council, and I think they're a great role to play, but, but uh, I, I think 
the grant, specifically on the grant, I, I would expect you, in your position on, on the Parish Council Association, to, to say that. But, but I think it's only fair that we all, we all share the pain. We, we've, got, uh, we've got terrible financial situations that we've been debating. The Parish Councils actually don't, don't have a cap on, on expenditure. Uh, and I'm very keen now to work more closely with town and parish councils. Uh, I may be delivering some of those services that we are unable because of the financial climate uh, to, to actually actually deliver. Uh, we did have the conference that you came to uh, last week. Uh, I thought it was a very good conference. We had the voluntary sector and the parish councils. Uh, but I, I don't think it was quite focused on the kind of objectives that I wanted to see out of it. So we are now actually another conference uh, coming up with just the parish councils, the chairman and the clerks to parish councils uh, to discuss the nitty gritty about how we can work in partnership together to de continue to deliver the services to our, our, our communities. And if we listen to the, what's coming out of the big conversation, um, uh, that, that lists down the, the priorities and, and the, the, the poll is what over 2,000 people, which is about three times what Maury would take. So it's a, a reasonable part about what their priorities are, and that's what us and the parish council, I think, need to need to consider. So but we need to talk. We need to be in the same room. We need to be talking to each other. That's and that's my view. Okay. Alan, yeah. um, just on that point, um, there are some things that can be done with the voluntary sector in town and parish councils, but they are clearly limited because of the capacity. That, that is out there. I'm actually have gone meeting this afternoon to my portfolio, deputy for portfolio holder, with a different hat on about these these opportunities. But let's put them into perspective and not, let's not see this as being some sort of scapegoat where you can pass on <coughs> responsibilities that quite frankly cannot be cannot be um, fully uh, returned by most of the authorities you're talking about without substantial commitments. But um, generally speaking this um, this, this, this is the saddest meeting, uh, it's the most depressing meeting, you uh, would echo those words that we've ever had in this, uh, in the, in this, uh, in this council, and it is like that because it represents a catastrophe for local government and it's uh, a benchmark for um, public services and their diminution and ultimate decline. I've, I, I've got this document you gave me in one of our briefings, Malcolm, and I'm happy to talk as, uh, as much as you want to about ways in which we might be able to mitigate some of these, uh, some of the, this, this impact. Um, but again, just so I mentioned the town and parish council, it's like small in scale and uh, not overwhelmingly, not overwhelmingly um, effective, given the, uh, the extent of these, uh, of these cuts and the dire consequences. So leisure centres, swimming pools and sports development, service at risk of being decommissioned in 18-19 uh, after a cut of almost 2 million in 17-18 bearing in mind that although some of these in the past have been green they have reduced uh, expenditure and have led to cuts I'd just like to mention that that uh, people seem to think that if things are down in this lake <coughs> as green there's no impact well there is an impact there's an impact on large numbers of staff who have gone down the road and on the levels of many of our, 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 our services. Two examples, obviously, green for the closure of day centres has had a significant impact. Green for youth service cuts, 50%, had a significant impact on what we are providing. So let's not think that because things are green and not amber or red, that there's no significant difference and it's just easy and things are going ahead as normal. There have been significant consequence for service users already to the cuts that have been designated as green and there will be for those cuts that are designated as green in these in these documents and when you talk about children's services being protected i see here um, early help including parenting targeted youth support lifelines family information so family group conference etc etc 17 18 savings uh, minus 302,000 18 19 savings minus 656,000, a million quid off those areas that are supposed to be in these so-called safeguarded areas. I mentioned leisure centres and Roger mentioned these as well. Tour museums and tourism, service at risk of being decommissioned, public transport, 1.4 million knocked off our, our support. 
parks, countryside and rights of way, <coughs> over half a million, and then in the following year, services at risk of being decommissioned. We go on and on and on. Highways, maintenance, community development, etc., etc. These services are being withdrawn uh, from our provision. Um, this is no, uh, th 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 there's no doubt about it. And I'm afraid, Malcolm, and this uh, is similar to things I've said in, the, in here before, it is a part of an ideology uh, that is shared uh, amongst your, your government and presumably, because you are conservatives too, shared by, shared by your souls. And there are some crocodile tears, they are, there is some hypocrisy. It is a Tory government, it is Tory policy, it was clearly outlined in the manifesto for the last election, and you presumably went out and supported the Conservative candidates in that election, and so they are returning what they were mandated to do uh, with your support. So let's please not be too hypocritical uh, about what is, uh, what is going on this. I'd like just also to make a few comments about your response to this, um, and your response is, oh, we'll write letters, your response is that we'll talk to MPs, talking to a load of MPs that are more right-wing than the government. There's probably more in favour of the cuts that the government's making than the government itself is. I would fail to see what that effect that will have. You seem to be putting a great deal of, uh, a great deal of emphasis on trying to get some money for uh, rurality issues. Um, however, you seem to, the closing remarks, talk about that that support would not be direct in terms of any changes to the grant arrangements, but that it would give you the opportunity of raising council tax to make up the previous um, failings. So I'd be interested to, to hear what you have to say about how you think this rurality issue is going, to be, is going to be dealt with. And I'd also be interested in you saying, what is this rurality gap that you are, that you are talking about? Is it one million, two million? There, are, there have been some additional payments made in the, in, in the various grants for rural issues. So how much are we talking about? Is it going to make any difference whatsoever to the 80 million or, or whatever that we've got to find and the dire consequences, the dire consequences that we're in? I'm also minded to, uh, to quote from a, an article um, in, in The Guardian from about this time last year, which uh, made a very significant uh, and extensive research showing that in fact it was the urban areas and the metropolitan counties that have been most affected by, by cuts in, uh, in central government services. I can't get the damn thing up on the iPhone now, but I'll send you the, I'll send you the reference to this. Uh, and so I, 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 I and this is, there's other surveys that show that has actually been urban areas that have been uh, more, more heavily hit. Um, so I don't know what impact you're going to have with that particular, uh, with that particular um, effort. I'm also concerned about the, um, the, the effect and the inequality of significant council tax hikes. Not that I would, of course, oppose what you're doing this year, which seems to be essential and, uh, and, and balanced. But we all know that the central government is reducing income tax, particularly to the high earners. And we all know that council tax is a regressive tax that hits the, the average and low earners more than it earns those who earn in more affluent categories. So we must bear that in mind. It's a way in which the government is shifting from the higher profile income tax towards punishing people through, uh, through uh, council necessarily increasing council tax, which is, uh, which is regressive. I recognise that there is uh, a different atmosphere around, around the place um, because of you taking over, Malcolm, and I recognise that you might have some personal difficulties with it, as might other members of the, uh, of, of the Cabinet. But in terms of what you are doing about it, uh, I would be prepared to join you in a deputation to go down and bang on doors in Westminster and present an all-party approach. I would seek to, to, uh, to, to find members of the Labour um, Shadow Cabinet that would also receive us in this. Uh, uh, perhaps you might think about that, and I don't know if Roger would be prepared yeah. to, to participate in that in, endeavour, to actually show uh, publicly uh, uh, that we are uh, against this and to show that we are concerned. I would also ask, how many of you as portfolio holders, given your, uh, given your concern, given your apparent um, anger at what's being done by your own government, 
have threatened to resign your membership of the Tory party. It would be interesting to know if any of you have actually done this as a real tangible, as a real tangible uh, exhibition of your anger that you feel what this Tory government is doing is wrong. Or are you still going to continue to represent this Tory government in other, uh, in other circumstances where you're wearing other hats? Uh, thank you, but well, you would say that, wouldn't you? It's, uh, it, it's, if I was in your position, I'd be saying uh, the same sort of things. You obviously t try to make as much political capital out of it. I don't blame you for that. I would do the same. But I don't need any lectures about slavishly following uh, the government. If I can take you back uh, uh, six years to when we went unitary, uh, I was probably the most unpopular person in the Conservative Party. It wasn't a question, I don't think, of me resigning. It was a question of whether they were going to throw me out or not. Uh, when we went unitary, that itself saved £285 million. Uh, if we'd have been uh, carried on the way we were, we'd have been that far more in debt. So it, I think everybody, so a lot of people who were opposed at the time now agree with that. So, so your remarks about slavishly following government policy, I don't... Uh, I don't think apply. The more sensible part of your, your, your talk was about uh, parish councils, and I do agree with you. There's going, to be, uh, there's going to be different solutions in different areas of parish councils. The big parish councils who've got large budgets and the capacity to deliver services will, will probably go one way, but the smaller parishes that don't have that capacity <coughs> uh, will have to talk about, about hubs of uh, small parishes getting together. We're also, we're also working on the local joint committee about what that role is going to be in the future. Uh, that consists of elected parish councillors on that body. Uh, we're also looking at local commissioning um, down to parish councils. It might be the local joint committee, it might be individual members, it might be the parish councils. That's an ongoing conversation we're going to have. And your remarks regarding the actual budget itself, uh, that w where you say that we, we're taking um, money off children's services and that. I, I'm assured that actually won't affect the safety element of, of what we're doing there. And if you've got any suggestions, uh, we could reinstate that and where we can take it from. So we've got a balanced budget. I welcome those ideas. We've already talked to you. I'm quite happy to listen to what, what you've got to say. We're in such a dire position uh, that, that I welcome anything from anybody so, to, to solve the problem. But uh, I'm going to ask the uh, cabinet notes, and uh, Mal's asked to see. Yeah, Mal. Uh, thank you, Leader. Some of what I wanted to respond to, Alan, you said. Um, I think the first thing I would say is the report that we've got, as bad as it's painted and as bad as it appears, that isn't correct. What, we would be totally incorrect of us if we didn't explain to the public the dire state that we're all in and what possible steps we need to take to rectify it. So I make no <coughs> apology, Leader, for, you know, for what's in the report. When you talked about, it's quite interesting, Alan, when you said about uh, uh, the challenges of conservatism, where we sit and what we voted for at the last election. I actually always say to people when they ask me, I, I voted for the best of the worst, because I hate to think what the rest would have been like. So that's why we're here, to try and rectify what was already done before. Um, some of what you've said, uh, but I actually think the best point that came out really from Alan was actually to offer up to you that uh, there should be a joint party down to London to speak with ministers and explain the position that we're in in Shropshire, I think that was the best thing to come out of it for me. Because as an individual portfolio, as we've done it, <coughs> I've been to London Island several times and spoke to ministers on my, my particular portfolio. Um, have I made progress? I don't know. I'd like to think I have in certain areas. But unless you do, it, you, know, you can't kind of say, well, I've tried and I've been there. Equally, I know that so I look across at Cecilia, has been fighting the corner nationally with the uh, Rural Services Network. Uh, and I think as a, as a result of that, I think around this table we're hopeful that uh, actually the MPs and Conservative MPs will actually vote against the government when it comes to this settlement. So there may be some movement there that may help us. And that is a result of the work that we've been doing. Do we feel good about this? I've never felt worse in my life, if I'm honest. And I think that would go for most of the people around this table. You're right in what you say that uh, if you make cuts, <coughs> and some of those agree, and I've got some that agree, will the impact on services? Yes, they will. They will impact on services, and we're not going to deny it. But we have to let the public know that. But equally, if we don't make the cuts, where does it leave us? I haven't heard anybody around this table argue the fact that adult social care, children's services, vulnerable people are the most people that we should protect. We've all agreed that. But as a consequence of that, every other department in this council has to make the cut. 
and that cut is getting more and more and thinner and thinner of the services every time. Um, I don't know really where to go with you other than say this year's uh, budget is what it is, and I think we've got it covered off. Some of the, most of the things are in there we will deliver. I think next following years need are where the problems will come. And it's interesting when you look, and I'll share with you one I've inherited. When you look at it, we look at greens, you said, uh, you know, it could cause a problem. Ambers may be a problem, and the red are even more difficult. But it's interesting when you look at some of the greens and look at the ambers, I'm waiting for the response from the community and also from yourselves to say, well, I don't want to do that. I don't think that's appropriate. But if we really mean it and we're going to protect the services that we want to, we're going to have to get rid of some of the things that are unpopular. Uh, and I, I could go on forever later, but I think we have to accept where we are today. I think the most important thing we should do collectively, I'd love to see Roger and, and Alan, I'd love to see both of your groups come to the table and give us honest uh, things to help us, assist us where we can save money but still provide services rather than saying they're there. They haven't shown me any yet, and I certainly haven't seen any. Um, I think we need to keep Aaron at the government through all the areas that we're doing uh, to fight the corner. <coughs> I will just be territorial for a minute with housing. Roger, I'm, I'm not sure where you're coming from with Telford. I haven't looked at the figures, but if Telford have produced some housing that's cheaper and are making money out of it, well, they'll be one of the first. Because all the ones that we've done, you've been involved in housing in Shropshire through the registered providers. You know exactly how they work. You know exactly how long it takes to get a return. Every house, we're still at the front. We're still one of the top providers of housing in the country. And I don't think we should ignore that. Our affordable rate last year was only 30%. There's hardly anybody in the country who could match that. The problem we've got is, is the pressure that's been put on all the dredge providers through policies of the government, uh, like reducing the rent by 4% over four years, which is an impact of about 12% on the whole budget of those dredge providers. Why did they do it? They're doing it because they want to cut the housing benefit bill. But I never saw that coming. I don't think everyone in this room saw that coming. So we've got to work with those registered providers to, to deliver more. The way we can do it, we've got, you make it sound as if we're doing nothing. There are loads of schemes where there's land owned by Shropshire Council that's being developed on that was sold for a pound to the developers to make it work. I can think of extra care in Oswald Street. I can think of extra care in Shrewsbury where money's gone into. Many, many schemes where we support it. So I find it quite condescending, quite insulting that you say that you make it sound as if we've done nothing, where we've done a load. Clearly we need to do more to help us to do it rather than knocking us. Before Ruth succeeded, I think it's important to note that there has been a change of direction in the cabinet that has been uh, prioritised. Um, for instance, uh, income generation is as good as a cut, isn't it? Uh, and we, for the first time, uh, Peter Nottie now is uh, his deputy portfolio for income generation and efficiency, so we should be looking at, at, at raising income levels where we can. Uh, uh, we should listen to what the big society says regarding that. So, so there's opportunities there. We are we, we are trying to re-engage, for instance, with or we are re-engaged with the, the LEP, for instance. Uh, and uh, you know, there's a lot of European money there. It's capital, not revenue, but but it may. It may turn capital into revenue streams, that kind of thing. So we are actively changing the old ethos of the way we're moving forward with the strategy now to, to try and mitigate um, uh, the, these cuts. None of us want to see these cuts. We welcome anything from anybody to tell us where we can move something into the paper and move something out of the paper. But it has to balance at the end of the day for us to set a, a, a legal budget. So it's not that we're just sitting there doing nothing. We're doing a tremendous amount to try and mitigate uh, these circumstances. I'll be seeing in first. Um, thank you very much. Um, Alan, I'm not sure whether you're aware, but there's an organisation called Rural Services Network, which I have been chairing for the last couple of years. Um, and as a result of that, Shropshire has actually been in the forefront of representations to government about the disparity in funding between the rural areas and the urban areas. Um, in 2012-13, the, the um, Rural Services Network sat down with the um, ministers from the Department of Communities and Local Government and wrung out of them um, an acknowledgement of the fact that the imbalance in funding between rural and urban areas at that time stood at 130 million. Um, as a result of that and as a result of continuing pressure, uh, we have seen the, introduce, the, the introduction of a fund 
four rural areas called the Rural Services Delivery Grant. Now, when that first came out, it was a derisory figure. It was eight million pounds, and was only directed at those authorities which were deemed to be super sparse. That included Shropshire, and in that particular tranche, we got 800,000 pounds out of that particular deal. Um, over the uh, subsequent years, the, the amount that they've given us has inched up. Uh, last year, it was 15 million pounds. This year, as a result of very heavy pressure, not only from ourselves, but also from the all-party parliamentary group, all-party, I add, parliamentary group on rural issues, that, that amount has actually gone up to 65 million pounds. Now, we have gone, uh, three weeks ago, I sat down with the um, minister uh, at DCLG in charge of government funding, Marcus Jones, and he said to him that simply is not enough. The disparity is still much too great, and in your proposals, which are in draft form at the moment, you are still um, hitting rural areas much harder than urban areas. It, we're not saying that urban areas aren't taking a hit. What we're saying is that rural areas uh, are taking a much greater hit, um, and the proportion that we're having to find in savings is something like 20% more in some areas uh, among rural authorities than among urban authorities. Now, the problem with the, um, with the, uh, the original calculation that was made of £130 million was that that got damped out of existence by the uh, mechanism that goes into the local government uh, financial settlement, which tries to uh, ensure that there is not too much turbulence in the system. However, it always seems to be that the, any turbulence that goes the way of rural authorities immediately gets damped out in favour of urban authorities. Now, what we've said to government this time is that, at the very least, they have got to respect that, that full £130 million in order to try and bring some balance into the equation between, town, uh, between rural authorities and, and uh, urban authorities. We have other problems which are simply not taken into account sufficiently by government, which is the cost of delivering rural services is much more expensive for us in Shropshire to send out our waste bins all the way round Clun, for example, and all the way back to the depot, than it is if you're trying to do the same thing in Clapham. Uh, equally, delivery of social services, of adult social care, etc., etc., etc. The costs per capita in rural authorities are much higher than they are in, in, uh, in um, um, urban authorities. This is acknowledged by government. Um, they have come under very, very heavy pressure this time. The all-party parliamentary group uh, two weeks ago held a debate which was very well attended. Marcus Jones was taking it and he very nearly had to run for cover. He got such a lot of uh, stick, not just from his, from, from his Conservative members but from uh, the Liberal Democrat uh, MPs and also a couple of Labour MPs, you'll be, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, there is a very strong likelihood that uh, quite a lot of MPs are going to walk through the lobbies against the financial settlement this time. Such is the strength of feeling. Now, I have to say that if Rural Services Network hadn't been there, hadn't been prompting, hadn't been providing information, hadn't been acting as the secretariat for the all-party parliamentary group, I don't think we would have gone as far as we have in this. I really don't. And to suggest that we are sitting here doing nothing about it is frankly insulting. I've been working my you know what's off <laughs> on this for the last seven years, although I've been doing it very much under the radar. I'm now in a happy position of being able to actually tell people rather more about what I've been doing. Um, just on the other side um, of my portfolio, um, I have noticed the dark uh, prognostications for the area of, w of which uh, I now uh, take charge, that is particularly um, uh, uh, parishes, uh, parishes and towns and, and, and local commissioning to those. I have every intention of working very hard indeed to see what solutions we can come up with, working very closely with our partners out there to make sure that we can continue to deliver services between us. I think we've got to be extremely flexible about how it's done. I think we have not to be height bound. We've just got to work out the very best solutions we can come up with. And I will pledge to everybody that that is what I will be doing 
over the next few years. Thank you. Roger, Roger says. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I recognise the amount of work that Cecilia has done, and I think her and Heather Kidd, who is on the People and Places Board for the LGA, are working together to put forward the rural case, and it does need to keep on hammering. So, yeah, and, uh, the work does need to go. I'm disappointed the Rural Services Delivery Grant that appears in the budget seems to be going in for general purposes. It isn't being highlighted to actually assist in specific areas so that we can all go back to government to say, this is what it's being used for, give us more, we need more to do it. Bus services, for example, is being decimated under, under the proposals that's before you today. But can I also come back to Mal, and I think we may be seeing it from the same sort of hint sheet, but it may need support, and that's the empty home strategy. I think if we invest money in that and bring back those empty homes, we get a double win. That's the social consequences of where those empty homes are in that neighbourhood, but we could also bring those homes back into habitation and get the new homes bonus. New homes bonus has been reduced, but as far as I'm aware, it would still give us a return on any investment that is made and actual and actions that we take. Which may, which may cost money, may need compulsory purchase or threatens of it, to bring those empty homes back, in, back into use, back into habitation. There was a calling of the original decision. It did come back. It's been part, part of a task and finish group. But we do need to show that we do have teeth to bring those empty homes back. And I think that would be somewhere where we could, in 2017, 18, start to get a return almost soon. But I, the, uh, the, the Rural Service Delivery Grant, I mean, we all welcome that, that's extra money, but unfortunately it's been gobbled up by the reductions in rate support grant. Uh, the grant doesn't take uh, any account whatsoever of the living wage, which while it not, may not uh, affect uh, the county council too much, certainly will, will affect elderly care provision. So that's a hit that, uh, that's not in there. There's the uh, apprenticeship tariffs that actually isn't in there. There's, and we've still got the business rate. Uh, we, we're told that it's 100%, but uh, we're nothing about it in the, um, in the statement. And we're still a bit uh, ambiguous to whether it's 100% because it requires certain other, other liabilities and responsibilities to go with that. So we're not actually clear. We're going to get 100% of the the business rate, we still await government's details on uh, on that to, to, to see if we are. If I've got to say it, I think there's a, a, a bit of smoke and mirrors uh, uh, with the way that the, the, uh, the formula operates and we have to, to understand that. Uh, but by and large, when you take all this into consideration, uh, our settlement compared with the urban areas is, is much, much lower. Uh, Leader, I just want to come back with Roger with the, the empty properties. I think your point is well made and, and I do agree with you. There's a report going back to scrutiny this next week, I think, or this week, with uh, the progress we've made since the last scrutiny, which I think you're welcome. Um, clearly, there are figures within the report that empty properties, that discussion is still ongoing, as uh, I'm a big believer anything that's got the potential to have income for the council should not be going, clearly needs to stay. Uh, and empty properties is one of those. Empty property officers clearly can, a, can make a difference to the community, but also we have potential to earn money. Uh, I think, I don't know where Roger where we talked about uh, Capacity Grid. No, okay, there's a company called Capacity Grid, which is a private organisation that said they would come in and review our empty properties within the county. And they believe that they could earn us something in the region of, um, help me out on this one, Andy. Andy. 450,000, about 450,000 new homes bonus in one year, which clearly is a significant return. Um, we're looking at whether we do that through them or whether we do that internally through our own services that we've got and our own staff. So clearly there's discussions to go on with that. I think the more important one as well is new homes bonus. Um, to be fair to the council, they tried to give us as much new homes bonus as <coughs> spend and make use of, and I spoke about earlier about some of the ways that has been spent. But it is about internal capacity and spending that, some of that money. And where if you don't show a return and be using the new bonus for what it is intended for, my concern is, and I say this openly, the government will come back and look again and say, we gave you new homes bonus for delivery, and if you haven't delivered, then we will look at recalculate some other way. They threatened before that they would take a third of the new homes bonus and put it into the LEP, 
uh, and the biggest bulk of that would have been ours. So I found that quite infuriating that we'd be going to make a bit of that we'd actually already put in there. So I think the point I'm making is, and I'm supporting you on this, we still need to show investment where we're getting the return uh, and making sure that we use some of that money in the right way. Okay. Uh, Lee, Lee, I don't know whether you want to give the cabinet some assurances that, that, that Roger's brought up about uh, the suggestion that the, the economic cutbacks will will affect the, the actual safety of the people that we've made a priority to to protect. So I don't know if you want to say a couple of words to satisfy uh, Roger and the rest of the cabinet that that's the position and then perhaps the portfolio holder for education can do the same for, for children's services. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, I think the um, I think the situation we find ourselves in um, in adult services is that um, reputationally um, we, we we carry the burden of being the um, section of the council that not only is the biggest single liability to the local authority but also um, a reputation for consistently overspending our budget. Um, I think that um, the uh, the approach that we've seen this year um, in terms of seeing our service area as a priority for the council um, is, is clearly very welcome. Um, and also I think some considerable work being done by our finance support around really getting into what growth and uh, that the real growth of demand within our service looks like and attempting to map that more realistically than we've seen in the past. Because um, it won't surprise you to know that um, I don't like sitting here and being um, an apologist every time we go over the budget that we've been assigned. Um, but on the other hand, um, I, I do find it much easier to um, address the challenge of how serious are you at supporting the most vulnerable adults in Shropshire. And my response to that is, well, I'm that serious that we will overspend our budget if that's what's necessary. Um, I think that um, we mustn't lose sight of, in addition to the challenge around uh, rural delivery of services, um, we do in Shropshire have a, um, a demographic. We're very fortunate to have um, some extremely long-lived residents in Shropshire, and that's something to be celebrated. And, and advances in uh, medical science means that um, people are living longer with more long-term conditions. That brings with it a very considerable burden when those people need our support, um, and that support and the volume of that is continuing to grow. Um, but I do think that um, I'm, I'm very happy um, to, um, uh, to acknowledge there's been some very considerable work done um, uh, by um, adult services um, in looking to make the most appropriate savings. Um, we've delivered £77 million pounds worth of savings over the last three years, and I think that um, that uh, hard look at the way we deliver services has improved service delivery in lots of instances. We've been, we've been much more effective. Um, we're focused on prevention, um, and certainly the way that we seek to intervene much earlier on in people's journey and their look for support um, has enabled us to divert a considerable amount of, ad of additional spend down the line. Um, and so that way of operating on preventative, a preventative approach and working with colleagues in public health, I think has um, improved um, the uh, prospects for some of our most vulnerable considerably. I don't think that it would be appropriate in addition to um, me reassuring you of my commitment to make sure that the most vulnerable are supported if I didn't take the opportunity to highlight my anxiety, um, and I think it's probably more than an anxiety, my, my very serious concern um, around some of the proposals um, that you know my director has tabled around proposed savings for 17 and 18, which are rated RAG. Um, I am very seriously concerned um, that by the time we get there, um, those are going to represent, to my mind, uh, a retrospective step, uh, a backward step in terms of the way that we look to deliver um, our services in adults, um, and uh, having to look at making um, uh, savings, making cuts around that preventive agenda and some of the early intervention work around the requirements of the CARE Act um, I think will be um, potentially even more damaging for our budget going forward. But, you know, um, we are where we are in terms of that. 
um, and uh, I remain committed to making sure that we deliver, we continue to deliver um, most effectively and efficiently, um, and we continue to support the most vulnerable. David, do you want to say anything? Would like to so it? Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, my, my, my delight, which was genuine, at, at being offered the role, um, very quickly evaporated. Once I, I picked up the first report and I started to read through the figures, uh, and I was horrified, and I still am horrified. I can't go into the level of detail that, that Lee has just done. I'm still digging my way in. I um, haven't yet had my third complete week. Um, uh, what I am aware of, though, is that the, the LGA, bless them, have actually offered some free support to us, which Karen has uh, organized and is taking up. Um, and they are arranging for some people to come in um, sometime in March, and they will go through all of the figures with us. Um, to make sure that we are, in fact, looking in the right areas, that what we're saying is robust about what can be delivered within the money, and they'll tell us if we can't. Uh, and I think when we have that piece of information, then we'll, I will be in a better position, really, to comment about 17, 18. 16, 17, I, I think that's not, I'm not even going to spend any time on it. My predecessor has, obviously was satisfied with it. That, that will happen. Um, 17, 18, no, I, I think we are at the start of, of the process. And, I, and I, Alan, I do hear what you say uh, about individuals and, and our attitude to things. And, and yes, it's, 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 it would be very easy for us all to resign the party, but if we all resign the party, then we all lose our seats. And then where are we? As, as individuals in wanting to do uh, things for the community, which I'm sure we all do. And I'm sure everybody sat around this table is, is as horrified as I am at the thought of what faces us over the next years if we cannot get any change at all in, in attitude if we cannot find money from anywhere else it, it is going to be it, it is going to be dire but um, the, the, nevertheless there will be uh, I'm assured uh, sufficient means to do the most important jobs and if you look down page 22 of, of the figures uh, all the various areas of responsibility that come under uh, uh, the portfolio. There are a lot of things that actually are not being changed at all. They are still showing growth, um, and we're confident that we can continue to deliver the safeguarding for the most vulnerable children. Um, you, you gave me an instruction when you, when you offered me the role, which was uh, never to get into the Shropshire staff for bad reasons, and uh, I, I have no intention of... of uh, Disobeying that instruction, leader. No, that's probably all I can say this morning. Does anybody else to see this go to the to the vote? I, I will say something, Alan, to, to you and to Roger. Uh, let's swap the gladiatorial arena now for some sensible debate ab about the way we move forward. So I make that offer to you. Uh, I know we have these gladiatorial contests at, at uh, budget time, but uh, I would ask you, is that serious that we actually put that aside and we do work together? Uh, to try and deliver uh, as much service as we possibly can to the Shropshire community. So I'll, I'll leave that with you just to think about it. Yeah, well, I can do it. Oh, sorry. Just one other thing I meant to say, apologies, I, I, I didn't. I have, in fact, uh, uh, as you know, already asked both uh, Alan and Roger uh, to be included in the briefings, or some of the briefings that I, I have with the director. Um, I am, as, as you are, very, very open to discussions as to how we might best do things. Alan <laughs> has already appointed somebody uh, to represent his group who will participate in that, and I'm, I'm not sure, Roger, if, if you have yet, but uh, that is a genuine offer. Uh, and like Malcolm, I think the, uh, the suggestion that there is a combined um, appeal, if, if we might, to government, I think is a very helpful one. I think we are at the point where the <coughs> political ping pong really needs to be put away for a little while, uh, and, and we really need to be getting to the bottom of the problems that we all face. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did you want to say something, Alan? Yeah, if, if I may, and I'll probably say it if I say no, but anyway. But uh, I, I think um, Clive wanted to say something. You go first, Alan. No, I might. Go, no, go first. <laughs> 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 he wants a final word. <laughs> Well, on a technical note, in terms of green, amber and red savings, the colours don't denote whether the savings have less or more impact. 
Uh, it's around whether we have a clear plan to do it, and we can see how the savings are made. Some of the green savings, no doubt, will have a significant impact. Uh, that still doesn't mean that we won't look for alternatives. We will, but we have a clear way in which we can make those savings. Uh, I think the message has already been clear about partnerships um, with town parish councils, uh, voluntary and community sector, and we will be doing that also with the LEC. Um, but of interest, I've spent most of the morning talking to our partners in health, writing across the health and social care system, and there are some new players in that game. As Lee said, the adult social care budget is just under half of our uh, controllable expenditure. If you add in children's as well, which is all part of the health and social care system, it's way over half of our budget. And some of the gains and efficiencies we can create there, I think, are now possible through the Health and Wellbeing Board and in ways that we can work together. Uh, and again, with uh, more transparent arrangements across party, I think there's opportunity to engage locally in how we can integrate those services and improve on the position that we're showing. And I'm not pretending that we're going to solve the overall budget position uh, because it is, it is, as the leader said, very dire. <coughs> Nevertheless, from here, uh, having shown our partners just what our circumstances are, we can begin to rebuild together how we create an alternative approach, an alternative way of operating. Yeah, I mean, um, just to say, I don't in any way wish to denigrate the work that's been done in terms of rurality, which has been, uh, has been long and uh, unsustained. What well, the point that I was making about that is that, that any money is not going to be any sort of panacea and solve any of the real issues that we've got, which is relatively minor. And uh, the 130 million that, the, uh, that was identified in 14-15 uh, spread out among rural counties is not going to make, even if it all was redistributed and all that was put right, it's not going to make a great deal of difference. And I think it would be wrong uh, for anyone to think that that's going to be uh, the answer to, 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 any sort of, uh, to any any sort of problems. And indeed, I refer you again to the issues related to <coughs> urban areas, they're saying exactly the same. Uh, our problem is our transport, our problems are sparsity, their problems are higher levels of socio-economic deprivation, and also, it must be said, some of the uh, some of the implications of the cuts in the welfare state that this government has also, has also implemented. But as you say, in terms of uh, maintaining standards of safeguarding, there are different levels in all forms of life in terms of the quality and, uh, and the depth of, uh, of the safeguarding. And, um, we all know that many of our schools are subject to targets um, of, um, of floor standards. Uh, and if they go above them, they're unlikely to be identified as being a problem. But no school would want to exist at those levels at the floor. And what I'm saying is it seems to me that there's an inevitable driving down of, uh, of criteria and of, of standards under these, these cuts. And we don't want to be there. And people will suffer, no doubt, um, in, in, varying, in varying degrees. Yeah, we can work together talking about the details of this. And Roger and Malcolm can have a discussion about how and to earn bonus and that, that sort of thing, and that will, uh, will, will, will satisfy some sort of things. But the fundamental problems are go outside this chamber and go outside this council, and they rest in Westminster, and they actually rest with the, with the electorate of this country, albeit in four years' time. That is why, it's maybe saying, uh, stop this um, political banter, these are politics are about power, and, uh, and power is about doing things that you want to do. And what the Tories want to do is what they're doing. And I'm making the point that all the people I'm looking at at the moment, barring the officers, are Tories and have subscribed to that perspective. And that perhaps you are in a stronger position than I am, or Roger, in terms of impacting on this. And I'm sure that if David did threaten at least to, uh, to resign and showed, some, and showed some real resolve in doing so and then ultimately did um, resign and fall on his, his sword, that would make uh, a, a, an impact if people are doing that throughout the country. Uh, even if it means someone else coming to this table, David, uh, then uh, that would be a fine thing and, uh, and, and we'd all uphold him 
and applaud him for his dignity and his conscience. <laughs> if, if we're talking about party loyalty, Alan, I'm, I'm afraid I, I wasn't going to say it, but I've got to say it. Uh, can I ask you then, are you fully supportive of your leaders, you were sending some Marines out without weapons to bring back flying pickets? Uh, and, and all the nonsense we're hearing from the Labour Party. I, I know, I wouldn't think for a minute that you're in favour of half of that stuff. And I'm not going to say no more about that. Well, if, if, if you want to put that down, if you want to put that down as an agenda item for the next couple of years, I'd be happy to respond. Okay, is anybody else in the uh, Stuart? Uh, yeah, just just very briefly, um, as, uh, as you're aware, I've only been in this post, as David has for the last three weeks, uh, been presented with some uh, horrific things which we're looking into. Um, I can just assure, would just like to assure everybody that I'm determined to look at uh, al alternatives to closing museums and uh, leisure facilities, uh, determined to look um, at, at partnership <coughs> opportunities, wherever they may be, not, to, not necessarily locally, but wherever they may be. And again, Roger and uh, Alan, more than happy to discuss and share ideas and alternatives, <coughs> possible alternatives uh, with you both, uh, more than happy. Uh, we are in a very transparent situation and we need, we need to work with each other as opposed to against each other. Okay, well I think we've had a, a, a good debate about a very, very serious uh, subject. Uh, so I think we've now got to put the, the recommendation uh, A, B, C and D. Will somebody move that? Move. Move. Seconded? Okay. Right. All those in favour? <coughs> oh, that's carried. Thank you very much. That concludes the meeting. Thank you.